Holy crap, I love that card. Card number 81 from the 1953 Bum Color set, Ina Slaughter, who is depicted with a couple of bats hanging out with some palm trees in the background. But the way that that shot is composed, there's so much sand. I, I always feel like he's storming the, be the beach somewhere in the Pacific theater of World War II. It just looks like he's ready to go to battle. Um, I love that card. And I had a lot of fun putting that video together way back whenever that was a few years back. Um, that's one of my favorite cards from that set. So card number 81, that must mean it is session number 81 of Card Room Live. And we are live and I see a whole bunch of comments in here. And that's great because there's absolutely nothing planned for tonight's session other than to chat it up and see what happens. For those of you that have never been in a card room live before, get set for disappointment because this is not a show. It's a hangout for fellow vintage collectors. Every now and then we're organized and have a topic and guests, but that is not the case tonight. Tonight, um, we're going to waste some time looking at and talking about cardboard and we're going to try to make it time well wasted so if you're here with us uh with us live welcome um i already see a bunch of comments coming in uh if you're new i encourage you to introduce yourself you'll find your, that uh, that you're amongst fellow collectors if you're a lurker that's okay too it's okay to lurk uh if you're listening to this later uh you might be going to or coming home from your place of business you might be sorting cars looking at ebay walking the dog sitting on the john wondering if Eddie, Eddie wakes is going to come up as he often seems to you might be wondering if i'll ever stop referencing the card room video that reese and d card ranger is supposed to make but hasn't and the answer to that question is no i'm not i'm not going to stop referencing it until the video gets made although last time reese promised that he's been making progress Whatever you might be doing, I hope you get something out of it. If you want to get in touch or have ideas for future sessions, you can email me at bowman53channel at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram, bowman53 underscore Alex. I'm also on Twitter or X, if you prefer, 1953 Bowman Color. You can always find that information located in the description below. Good evening to everybody. Um, for those of you who are here, if you have a question or an idea for a topic or a card that you want to talk about or a set that you want to talk about or an idea for cards that we could go looking for on eBay, drop it in the chat. Otherwise, get ready to listen to uh, silence because we're not afraid of silence in this live stream. Um, I've threatened to at some point do a entirely silent live stream one of these days it will happen just literally no word spoken from beginning to end uh maybe that's what i do when i really want to <laughs> kill these live sessions which of course i don't want to do i'm just messing around um all right so let's see who's in the chat rocket rick is here what's up rick i'll go ahead and mention this right now i'll mention this later but i'm going to mention it now since rick is right here Rick is going to be our guest next Sunday. Today we have no plan. Today is going to be absolute chaos. But next Sunday, uh, it'll be civilized, and we'll have Rick 
on, and Rick will be sharing a set uh, from his massive, impressive collection. I'll give you a hint, it's from the 40s. And it's one that I think he has a lot of knowledge to share and certainly a lot of cards to share. Uh, so that'll be next Sunday. Looking forward to that. How are you tonight, Rick? Mike is here. Mike promised to uh, um, add to the bull. So Mike, I'm expecting it from you. Rob is here, baseball time traveler. Um, Rob, I mentioned this in a comment in your video, but I just wanted to give you a public shout out. Rob's, I think, doing a fantastic job with his videos. Um, and in particular, I really appreciate the inventiveness of like ways that Rob is coming up with showing stuff. Like he did this really cool thing where he was, um, I think you were talking about that, uh, that fight that broke out. Um, it was like, was it Marischal and Koufax and all, like that, that one particular game. And you had a really cool layout with like all the fielders positions and they were represented by cards. And that was like your background. And then you, like you shot your computer and then you were showing the cards in the foreground. That was really a really clever way to create a visual for your video. And just want to give you props for that. Hodges1455 is here. What's up? Uh, happy Easter to everybody. Um, might as well do that right now. I've got I've got a I've got a uh, an Easter greeting that I want to share with all of you. So I'll just do that right now. So here it is. Uh, happy Luke Easter to everybody. Um, this one came up in my YouTube feed, not my YouTube feed, my Twitter feed, and I just had to sort of set it aside. Um, I sent this to a few folks already. You know, you can find all kinds of crazy stuff on the internet, especially on social media. And this came up and I was like, okay, I mean, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. Um, I don't know that I'd actually want the card of this, but I appreciate it going by in my feed. So happy Easter to everybody. All right, let's see who else is in here. Dan is here. Uh, you and me both, Dan. Dan, thanks again for last weekend. Dan and I crammed a ton of uh, history into an hour session. Considering we were doing it live, I'm pretty proud of that session. I think it went really well. It was a lot of fun to go through. Um, so thanks again, Dan. And like we talked about, we'll have to do it again sometime. We've got plenty of other stadiums to, to get into. Uh, let's see who else is in here. Jason's here. Hello. Orlando is here. Chris from Missouri is here. What's up, Chris? Hello, Peacemaker. Mitchell is here. Yes, baseball has started. Uh, the Phillies managed to win a game today, which was exciting having blown the last two against the Braves. Um, it's a new season, but so far it feels like same old, same old. The Braves are really good and have a great offense, and the Phillies have all kinds of potential and kind of are above average, but not as great as they could or should be. I don't know. That's, that's, my, that's my really in-depth analysis of the first three games of the season that I've been paying attention to. Mookie Chilson is here. What's up? Um, hey, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, for anybody that hasn't yet had a chance to see it, I got the uh, the 50 Bowman Rizzuto. Um, I would hold it up for you, except I've already put it in the case. It's back here somewhere. Um, and that's a card that has probably been on my wish list for a couple of years. Uh, but as you all know, like, wish lists... Um, you know, you can add a card to your wish list and get it a couple days later. And sometimes you add a card to your wish list and you don't get it for years. And that was the case for that Rizzuto. Um, but uh, it was time. I just it just popped up and I just I just decided now is the time to get it. And I'm happy with the one I got. Uh, Boston Kid is here. Um, yes, I echo this from Orlando. Hope everybody had a great Easter. Um, three games in and the Sox are brutal already. You know, it's only three games, but it's hard not to look at three games and, and like feel like you're getting a sense of how things are going to go. 
Uh, let's see. Yankees swept the Astros in four games. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> Juan Soto is the greatest Yankee since Babe Ruth. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mitchell, Alex, an idea for a future episode would be covering World War II years when we had no cardboard to collect but plenty of stories. Even the Browns reached the World Series. That's, yeah, absolutely. You know, I want to give Mike, um, the sports history collector, a shout out because Mike has a uh, long standing series going of uh, players who served in World War II and he shares their stories of of service as well as like maybe how I, I, every now and then i think it also includes like how they got into the service and then coming back into the into the uh, into the game but yeah the idea of like what the game was like during world war ii especially when you know you have a team like the st louis browns winning the world series yeah that's absolutely uh true one of my very first uh like history videos if you will was built around a baseball that I acquired. It's it's up on my shelf, and I can go get it um, for those of you that haven't seen it before. It's actually a World War II baseball, and in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, Eno Slaughter uh, signed that baseball. Let me let me go get it. One second. Give me a sec, guys. Let's see where is it? Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to take it out of here if I can help it. But this is actually, and you, oh, I forgot the lighting on this screen is not so good, so you're not going to be able to see it. It's, it's once again, it's a baseball that has not been signed by anybody, and I'm going to pretend it has been. Let me let me take a couple pictures of it real, real quick, and uh, I'll throw these up on the screen so you guys can see this a little bit better. This is a baseball that I found, man, like six or seven years ago now, um, that is a team signed ball from a uh, collection of men from the military that were put together to uh, play baseball during World War II. And I think they were predominantly playing in the, in the Pacific theater. Um, I, I did all the research about this six or six years ago, kind of, I don't have it handy, but I'll show you the, the photographs. And all these guys were in the military at the time and there's a couple guys that were in the minor leagues but a lot of a lot of them were just enlisted men that were on this team and the only recognizable name is Ina slaughter here i got them i have the pictures uh here so i'll show you guys the baseball so here it is and if you look at the stamp on the right you can see it says professional baseball fund and so the idea was these uh this was equipment that was um collected and um pulled together to send into the military so that the guys could play um and they were all stamped like this professional baseball fund and this this baseball is just signed up and down by members of the of the military that were on this particular team and you can see on the left hand side at the very top is Enos Slaughter. Enos is definitely the most recognizable name um, among all the guys. I, I At one point, I did look up all these players' names and try to identify them. A handful of them had been in the minor leagues um, before and after the war, but the majority of them were just average guys in the military um, that were just on this team. So Enos was by far the biggest name and sort of like the celebrity figure, if you will, that kind of got a lot of people interested to go see these games and whenever they would play. But um, that's really, you know, like one of my favorite pieces in the collection. And it's one of those parts of the collection that I would love to kind of focus on more. Like there's a whole bunch of like World War II era stuff when it comes to baseball that is out there that, I mean, I just haven't really even scratched the surface of. So anyway, Mitchell, that's 
a long winded answer to your, to your question or your idea. I think it's a great idea. Now let me get back on track here. Uh, where was I? Hey, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome, Rob. My pleasure. Rick is here. What's up, Rick? And Scott, AKA Stuke is here. Um, you should get that risotto. Everybody should get that risotto. Let's see. Peter B is here. Yes, Spec Shea. Um, absolutely. And I was, I left a message uh, in, in Mike's video, which I later realized um, Mike was going to mention, but I understand Mike, like sometimes you have like a bunch of stuff you're going to talk about with the player and you just don't get to it. Um, one of the interesting things about Spec Shea was he was also the pitching consultant for Robert Redford for the film, The Natural. And I remember reading about it, like Redford and I guess whoever, you know, the folks making the movie, they wanted to make sure that his pitching style, his throwing style and his pitching style was reminiscent of that particular era. And so he reached out to Spec Shea and I'm not sure why it was Spec Shea, but he reached out to him and Spec Shea consulted on how to wind up and how like, you know, just like the overall look and feel of, of how to play in that sort of era specific look for, for the, for that movie, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, yeah, you're welcome, man. YouTube community has become a classroom for me, even after collecting for 40 years. Totally. I mean, I remember when I first jumped on YouTube, I didn't know anything. Like I was a, you know, I grew up in the eighties and I collected, you know, 87 tops and, uh, when I jumped on YouTube, I had just started collecting the Bowman color set and was just getting my feet wet with that and was making all kinds of mistakes and didn't really know what I was doing and quickly started to learn about grading and vintage and different ways to collect and how to spot condition and all that kind of stuff. But I also started to learn about cards and players and eras and, you know, it's been an ongoing thing. Uh, you can kind of take it for granted, but every everybody's video, it doesn't even have to be a video about the history of a player or anything. It's just watching all these videos with all these cards. You just absorb a lot. Um, absolutely. Uh, anybody that's going to be in Cleveland, uh, give a shout out in the comments. Um, everybody does this once in a while in our live streams leading up to leading up to the national, but I think it's a good idea to keep checking in who's going to the national um, so that you guys can all connect with each other. I'm still on the fence about it. I really like to go, of course. I'm not 100% sure one way or the other. Um, going to try to make it happen, but, uh, but if you're going, um, make sure that you figure out who else is going so you can make plans to meet up and get to know each other because honestly, um, in my experience, and I think you hear this from anybody that's ever gone, the cards are great, but getting to meet other people really becomes the thing that is the most fun. Yeah, totally. Uh, I agree. He's, he's kind of got it started off with uh, with the bang, and it's been going really well. Great channel. Uh, and that's right. There are a lot of people going to Strongsville as well. Um, is it really the 40th anniversary? That's crazy. Um, I'm not sure if The Natural is my favorite baseball movie, but it's definitely way up there. Like, I think that movie is like just the feel of that movie. There's nothing like it. I, I really, I really enjoy it. 46 of us are heading to Strongsville. All right. <laughs> That's fantastic. First time at the National. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> Cleveland depends on if I spend all my money at Strongsville. Okay. 
Uh, what are your thoughts on the 53 Bowman unreleased card that sold in the latest Love of the Game auction? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that might have been Chris from Missouri's card. Because uh, I know Chris was recently um, putting that up for auction. Chris, you're in here. I don't know if that's the if that's the the same card. Um, but uh, all of those cards are incredible. Uh, there, there are, I think, four, I want to say, off the top of my head. Um, there's a Warren Spawn. There's a Eno Slaughter. Eno Slaughter is the name of the knight, I guess. Uh, there's a Ferris Fane. And there's the horizontal um, Dodger card with somebody sliding in to home plate. I think they're amazing. I mean, I, like, that's my favorite set of all time. No surprise, right? And anything that's remotely related to that set, I find amazing. So the fact that four cards are known to exist that didn't actually get included in the set is fascinating. Um, I'm because to me, like one of the things I love about that set is just the way they made it and the approach. And so getting a little bit of insight into the decisions that they were making. Um, it's pretty, pretty awesome. And the fact that that stuff survived and is out there and can be collected is I think really good for the hobby. Cause it just makes you, to me, it makes me appreciate the set even more. Um, that's right. Next year. I mean, the only, I've only, I've only been to one national and, uh, that was in Chicago in 2019. And I was thinking like, I'm going to go to Wrigley or I'm going to go, you know, but didn't happen. Um, I do want to try to do that next time. What's up, Sammy Thunder? Strongsville is so close. Blasting Slayer in the car with Brian B. Roth in the passenger seat. That's I hope you guys film that. That should be a live stream right there. Um, there you go. It's sold. Congrats. Congrats, Chris. That's great. I mean, uh, you know, you found it. And, I mean, I'll never forget. Chris texted me that while he was... When he found the card, I, you know, he reached out to me and said, Hey, you know, does this, does this look familiar? <laughs> and it was, a, I had a thrill talking to, to Chris about that card and, you know, he, he got it. And, um, you know, that's like a dream. That's a, that's like a fantasy to like go to a card show and find something like that. Just kind of lying around it doesn't happen every day. So to, to have been a part of that, was exciting and I'm glad to hear that you know it's it's come a long way since then first trip to the national very cool um let's see they're doing two shows this year as a money grab slash comeback I'm going to one of them oh, I can pick one up for you Sure, what you're talking about there. There's Duke. I'll be going. I'll be getting paid to be there by my LCS test drive in the Dallas Card Show with him this spring. That's cool. All right, guys. Uh, so what's on the uh, what's on the agenda for tonight? Uh, I've got eBay open. Any cards anybody wants to look at or any topics? I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, oh, the Slayer shirt. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I would like I would like to see uh, Brian in a Slayer shirt. Hey, Ed. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it took three days, right? It took three days, uh, Ed. And just barely, man, because they were about to blow it. And what was that? Like the eighth inning, they were about to blow it again. Um, <laughs> absolutely, 160 and two. <laughs> nobody, nobody can match Wesker Griff's enthusiasm for the Phillies. Um, I'm gonna put the uh, the um, stream yard in the chat if anybody wants to hop in. Um, hop in, talk some cards. Oh yeah, you know I'm looking over here. I realized I had a couple things I wanted to mention before I before I put the 
chat in there. The first piece of business. I've been meaning to talk about this for months, and I just keep forgetting every time. Um, but uh, I wanted to mention that I've got a bunch of Pee Wee Reese cards um, right here. You may remember me holding these up from time to time because they're just sitting here. They're just always sitting here. I've got like four of them that are for sale. I'm keeping one. Actually, I'm keeping, I have a whole bunch. I'm keeping my graded version and I'm keeping a couple of raw versions. But like three or four years ago, I got a whole bunch of these and um, I've enjoyed having them. But a few months ago, I started thinking, you know what? I'd rather, I think I'd rather convert some of these into another card for my collection. Um, and so I wanted to kind of get these out there. Um, and before I put them on eBay or try to sell them anywhere else, I'll, I'll offer these to all of you out there. Um, if you're interested in getting one, email me. Uh, don't ask me right now because I'm not going to pay attention uh, <laughs> to try to figure out how to sell these right now. But if you're interested, reach out to me. Uh, I will send you proper photographs of each uh, card so that you can see them in detail. I will tell you up front, they are uh, lightning bolt cards is what I like to call them. They're full of creases. Um, they would grade a one if they, if they were to be graded, you know, just to be upfront with you about the condition of the cards, but they are beautiful cards. I love these cards, of course. And uh, I would be happy if they went to a fellow uh, collector in this community of ours. So if you're at all interested in picking up uh, one of these Reese cards, or if you know anybody that's interested in picking up one of these Reese cards and you just want a copy and you're not really worried about, you know, having a Gen Mint 11, uh, send me an email and we'll, we'll figure something out. Um, we'd be happy to have these go to somebody in our community. The other thing I wanted to mention, and I'll probably do this later, is I have a package that I've been holding off on opening, and I decided I want to open this uh, during a live stream, so I'm going to do this tonight. I'm going to not forget to do it tonight. Um, this is a package, and I'll, I'll share the story of where it came from. I have no idea what it is, but it's Connected to two YouTubers, it's from one particular YouTuber, um, and I'll I'll share that at some point tonight. Uh, maybe we'll end with this, but I'm going to put this here. So stick around for that. I have no idea what it is, but it's always fun to get a care package. And I just thought rather than doing a video like a separate video for it, I'll do it. I'll do it live. Um, So only only Bob Lewis collects Gen Mint 11s. Yeah, I mean, I would have to check with Bob first to see if these are 11s or not. So if they are, they would they would also come with a Bob Lewis uh, guarantee on them. Bob Lewis approved. So I would make sure. Um, any pinholes? <laughs> no, um, I don't think so, Mookie. But if you really want me to, I can like... I can make a pinhole in one <laughs> in one of these cards. Uh, you know, we can we can figure something out. Uh, let's see. Let me put the let me put the chat in here. If anybody wants to hop in here, you're welcome to. Um, I think sometimes people feel a pressure. You don't have, you know whatever guys. It could just be me. If you want to hop in and say hello and show a card and hop right off, that's fine too. You don't have to stay for the entire live session. Um, but I'll put it in there if anybody wants to hop on. Otherwise, does anybody have any uh, cards that they uh, want to look up? The Colgan chips, right? We, I, think, I feel like we were kind of talking about them. Um, somewhat recently. In a, in a in a chat, uh, it might have been when we were. It was like me and Doug Kahn 
talking about um, talking about uh, the long set, the DeLong set. But sure, we can look up some Colton's chips. Anybody have any Colgan's chips in here? This is a part of the pre-war collecting world that I have definitely not gotten into. Um, not to say that I wouldn't at some point, just haven't really ever looked into it. Anybody have any favorites in here or any any thoughts on these? More Doug appearances, absolutely. Yeah, every every time I do one with Doug, Doug and I talk about how much fun we had and wanting to do another one. So it'll it'll happen for sure. <laughs> uh, I hope you have Uts as well, West Griff. Uh, Pennsylvania snack capital of the world. I hope you have some huts as well and some tasty cake and I hope I, I hope you're all set. Uh, Mangini has some, no no doubt. No doubt Mangini has some. I mean they're cool. Um, and I I really like the uh, let's see if I can find one. the little kind of container that they came in. Not the best picture of it. See if I can zoom in a little. These, these sort of like little round tins that the, uh, that the gum came in along with the, uh, the pictures. Pretty cool. I only eat my chips. Man, the humor is flying tonight. Several graded singles and quite a few tints. Cool. Um, Joe, I, I wonder... Um, let me go check your channel. I'm wondering if I have maybe missed some videos from you. I know I watched your... I have. Okay. Uh, you did one two weeks ago, and I know why I missed it, because I was not in town. Um, so I will have to bookmark that and come back and watch it. But uh, I'm going to guess you haven't done one on the, uh, the Colgan's chip, so I look forward to that. Peter B. has a few, including the Wagner. I also have the green and purple tin. That's cool. Wow. Okay. There's, so there's a bunch of Colgan's collectors in here. Cool. I know one of the um, draws to this is probably that they're not they're not as big on the radar as a regular card, and so they're maybe more affordable. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not because I've never really looked, but I've always heard that they're a little bit more affordable than the average equivalent of a, like a pre-war, you know, Hall of Famer, let's say. I mean, here's Tris Speaker. Stars of the Diamond. One in every five cent package of Colgan's violet chips and mint chips. Beware of imitations, everybody. The gum that's round. Beware of imitations. see the red borders colgans are cool too wasn't aware of that there is rick vintage oddball cards colgan's chips joe jackson is the big boy let's see it i don't know that i've ever seen it here's one shot of shoe with joe
Hey, what's up, Poor Leaf? I've got four tins and no cards yet. All right, well, you know, we started with something at least. You can get the cards to catch up. That's right, Orlando. I remember, I don't know if I heard that somewhere on YouTube or if I saw like an article about it somewhere that there were square proofs. 1912 is the year for the red border. Oh, I see. Um, how about... Here's Mr. Tyrus Cobb in the red border. Cool. I don't know that I've ever seen that before. I mean, I've seen Colgan's chips before, but not this particular card. Cool. Uh, let's see. And here is a 1909 Colgan's ch Chips square proof, as Orlando was saying. So maybe they, okay, so Rick, is it, there? are they labeled Colgan's Chips? Um, but actually were meant for a completely different uh, release. I think that happens a lot with these sort of obscure things is like there's an assumption and they kind of get labeled that way in the hobby and then people sort of later realize actually it was something else entirely. Any other uh, any other cards or sets that are on people's minds these days? Okay, cool. Thank you, Rick. I wonder. I, I mean, I wonder what. I guess I could try to go find it. I wonder what the set was actually intended for. They almost look like they could be uh, like a card game. And the red border are tough. These square ones look like they could be for a card game. I wonder how big they are. I mean, they look slightly smaller than a regular card. <clears throat> Cool. Mitchell says, been looking at a lot of cash and publications recently. Um, I wasn't even aware of cash and until like a few months ago when Blue Jacket, uh, Dave Blue Jacket 66 mentioned the cash and Babe Ruth, which I had never heard of and, and immediately bookmarked it because it's beautiful. And as Dave mentioned, it's, it's pricey, but it's not as pricey as a lot of Babe Ruth stuff. Um, And, uh, but beyond that, I have not really, uh, looked up anything else with cash and it's 
So it looks like the designation is R316. I mean, there's some great looking stuff. Here's Melot. I mean, that's just great. That's just a great shot with the facsimile signature on there. Let's see who else is in here. There's the babe. Paul Wainer. Harry Manouche. Chuck Klein. Let's take a look at some of these. I just pulled this one aside because I thought it looked kind of Cool Pittsburgh Pirates, George Grantham, Pittsburgh National League. There's a kid in the dugout there, a couple kids in the dugout. And here's Paul Wehner, another Pittsburgh Pirate, choking up on the bat. And Chuck Klein of the Phillies. That's a great shot. Cool. Uh, Mitchell, were there any um, that you were particularly drawn to? or And was it from this set, or were you looking for – through something else or were you actually like looking at the magazine itself because i'm going to guess this these are like from a magazine <clears throat> hey i appreciate it and uh happy uh uh happy uh one out of one out of three right <laughs> after today with the phillies and braves Um, E107, 1903, Reich Williams. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and search Google instead of eBay for that. E107, 1903, Reich Williams. Oh, okay. Top five pre-war set. Let me see if I can find that. The caramel set. Okay, so here's uh, a little write-up about this set on uh, prewarcards.com. One of the rarest and most expensive e-card issues, the release is one of the earlier known candy cards, as those didn't really become popular until later in the decade. Black and white images on the front. Um, Many of the pictures will be familiar to pre-war collectors as they were featured in other sets like T206. 
striking pictures can help this make, uh, sorry, <laughs> take two, the striking pictures make this truly an elite set, even using black and white imagery. Cards are rare, and the set is known for what are believed to be the several key rookie cards of players, including Christy Mathewson. Wow. So just really quickly looking through it, Chief Bender, Frank Chance, Fred Clark, Lou Krieger, Delahanty, who else is in here? Addie Joss, Nat Lajaway, Matthewson, John McGraw. That's a huge Cy Young. There's a lot of names in here. Cool. Hey, there he is. What's up, Dave? Andrew Nuffset has an E107 Cy Young. Christy Matthewson is the one to get. It will only cost you about 180000 <laughs> Right. Keep after it, Dan. Even a common player, right. <laughs> Maybe we can organize a timeshare ownership group to buy one. Or we can just look at the cards and say, those are cool. And spend our money on something else, right. That's cool though. I mean, I, I, I'm sure I've seen Andrew's card, Nuff said cards, uh, iteration of it, but I didn't, I didn't spend any time looking into this particular set. That's really cool. And I'm a, I'm a fan of black and white. I, I don't mind black and white at all. I think sometimes those are more interesting than color cards. Yeah, if anybody in here doesn't know uh, Andrew's uh, channel, let me um, find a link to it here. And I'm going to post his channel link in here for anybody that doesn't know Andrew's channel. You should absolutely go look that channel up and, uh, and subscribe. Andrew's a good friend of mine, good friend of a lot of people in here. He's a long-time YouTuber. He doesn't make videos as often these days, but guaranteed when he makes a video, it's one that you want to watch. He has a really incredible collection and a great eye for all cards, but especially pre-war. I've been told to avoid. All right, hey, Mitchell, good to see you. Uh, hope you have a great week and happy Easter. All right. Well, we're up on uh, 850, guys. Any last minute? I got a package to open here, but before I do that, any last minute cards anybody wants to look up? Or any last minute topics or conversations or comments or questions or anything of that nature? Semi Thunder posted a video earlier for a display case challenge. Looks interesting. Okay, I'll have to check it out. Um, thanks for bringing it up. I've been actually looking around my room the past week or so and thinking about how I want to reorganize what I've got. Um, so I'm starting to think about display cases. Oh, cool. That's right. I know because I know that. Andrew goes to that every year. It's cool that you guys get to hang out. Um, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open up this package here. I've been waiting. 
patiently. You've been waiting patiently. I want to give a shout out. Uh, I'm going to hold up a, a Larry Doby card and give a shout out to my friend and yours, Nina from Nina S who sent me this package um, a while back actually. And it was, I got, I got confused to be honest with you because Nina let me know that she had sent something out to me and I was, you know, let her know, if, you know, I said, Hey, thanks. And I promised her that I'd keep an eye out for it. And um, meanwhile, I got a package, but it wasn't from Nina. It was from Mike O. I was like, oh, a package from Mike O. Okay. And, and I, I didn't put two and two together. And then I reached out to Nina and Nina let me know that it was coming to me through Mike O, but it was a package from her. So this is a care package from Nina that came through Mike O. I mean, I've got two, two YouTubers, two legendary YouTubers attached to this package. Um, and I'm going to open it now. Um, no idea what it's in. And you know, you know how normally when you're doing a video, you like prepare and have already opened it up. Well, I have not done that. This is, this is live. And I'm going to, I'm going to do this very slowly and painfully. And I'm going to watch the number on the live stream drop as everybody leaves, but hopefully not. Cause you're going to be curious to see what Nina sent me. Nina is incredibly generous and has been, uh, to me, a, like a huge part of this community and uh, a vocal member of this community. She's not making as many videos these days, but that's okay. We all have our ebbs and flows, and I always appreciate Nina's involvement. And so here we go. Well packaged. I don't know if I should give Nina credit for that or Maiko. I guess I'll just give them both credit for that. All right, we've got a cardboard sandwich in here. There you go. It is confirmed. It is from Nina with painter's tape. I was gonna do it with the scissors, but I don't need scissors for painter's tape. Well, it's an SGC card. It's slabbed. What? Oh man, that is so funny. <laughs> Nina, you're a genius. I'm so glad I opened this during Card Room Live because we were doing a conversation I don't, I mean, I'd have to go back and I wonder if Nina was actually on with us or if she was in the comments, but somebody showed this card and I said, that's a beautiful looking card. And I wrote it down and just the other day I added it to my wish list and I thought one of these days I'll have to get this card and here it is. This is a beautiful card and it's a shame that Mitchell just left being a White Sox fan. 1952, Billy Pierce. That is a gorgeous looking card. And of course, Nina is fast becoming a Bowman scholar and knows all about these cards. And so not only is this like a car that we've talked about on this channel, but I mean, when I think of these illustrated Bowman cards, I definitely think of Nina. So to have gotten this from her is definitely a memorable, a memorable card. I mean, that's the, that's the thing about like a card you get from a fellow collector is not only do you appreciate the card, but when you look at that card, you think of that person. I definitely will always think of Nina when I see this card. So Nina, I don't know if you're here tonight, uh, but I will certainly send you a message to say thanks. This is a fantastic card. And I, you know, I love this card. I mean, you know, Billy Pierce, great player, right? Like anybody would be happy to have Billy Pierce in their collection. But to me, in addition to being a great player, 
it's just a beautiful card. I just, I mean, like, look at that, like the wind up, the socks, the cleats, the grip on the baseball, the background. I mean, hard to beat that. And like even the shadow on his on his jersey underneath the glove, so great. That's a card that you know just stands out to me. And now to have it and to have it come from a, a friend means a lot. So Nina, thank you so much. Super generous. Uh I know I like to, I used to pester you about making videos, um, but that's only because I really like the videos that you make. Um, but you know what? You don't have to make, nobody has to make videos, right? Um, we do it because we love it. We do it because it's fun. Uh, sometimes life, you know, gets hectic and you kind of fall out of it. That's okay too. But what matters is the connections that you make, right? That's what matters most. Um, you know, whether you're still making videos or not. That's not what matters. What matters are the friendships, right? So um, that's a great way to end tonight's uh, stream. Uh, next Sunday, we'll have Rick uh, sharing a set that uh, he has recently completed. That should be a lot of fun. Got a lot of cards to look through and a lot of stories to tell. Um, and I'm kind of figuring out the rest of the schedule for the month. I've got Another really, I'm one I'm really excited about for the 14th, but I've got some open spots after that. So if anybody's got ideas or topics for future sessions, once again, guys, let me know. Reach out to me. Talk to me on, uh, you know, Instagram or Twitter, or you can email me at bone53channel gmail.com. Um, if you enjoyed this live stream about nothing, guys, please give it a thumbs up. It does matter. It does help. Um, and as always, I appreciate all you guys hanging out. Um, it's a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun tonight just shooting the breeze with everybody. So uh, thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your Easter and a great week. And we will see you on this thing next Sunday. Take care. <laughs>